This story begins on another Christmas Eve many, many years ago, to be exact in 1886. At the time the adventure occurred, I must confess I didn't quite understand what was going on. In fact, I never did quite make heads or tails of it until Holmes took pity on me later and explained the whole thing. But I shan't try to confuse all of you. I'll tell you the story exactly as it happened. On that Christmas Eve in 86, I was standing in our Baker Street rooms dressed in the costume of Santa Claus. Holmes, his long, thin fingers pressed together, lay back in an armchair and gazed at me quizzically, while our housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson, stood by the door. Well, Dr. Watson, you make a grand Santa Claus. Doesn't he, Mrs. Hudson? <laughs> uh, try the beard on, Watson, old chap. I'm afraid this is going to be a little uncomfortable. Oh, there. Uh, how does it look? Oh, you look just like the old man on the Christmas cards, Doctor. Yes, Watson. <laughs> it really does become you. The cheery twinkle of the eyes, the ruddy complexion, and the um, appropriate girth. What a shame we can't obtain some snow and a sleigh and reindeer for you. However, I'm sure Mrs. Hudson's nieces and nephews will be very much impressed. Ah, that they will, sir. And it's very kind of you, Doctor, to offer to come over to the house with me. With their father in the hospital and my sister at his bedside, it would have been a very miserable Christmas without ye. Oh, I shall enjoy myself, but I think I'll take this beard off before we get there. Ugh, that's it. Are you ready to leave, Mrs. Hudson? I am, sir. Will I get a cab? How far do we have to go? Oh, Lexington Gardens, uh, number 28. It's just off the Edgware Road, Doctor. Oh, it's not far, but bearing in mind my costume, I suppose we better take a cab. Aye, sir. I'll get one. Holmes, what are you going to do with yourself? I hate leaving you alone on Christmas Eve. Oh, don't worry, old chap. I shall spend a very profitable evening writing on my new monograph. Oh, what's this one about? An analysis of teeth marks on pipe stems, with particular regards to indicated character. Oh, gracious me, how exciting. <laughs> well, I must be going. Well, don't forget your sack of presents, old fellow. Oh, great Scott, no, no, no. When you come to distribute them, I think you'll find that I took the liberty of adding a few trinkets on my own behalf. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, Holmes. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Holmes, but there's a gentleman to see you. Says he's an old friend of yours. Here's his card, sir. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's old Winnicom. Splendid. Ask him to come up, Mrs. Hudson. All right, sir. And I hope your party is a great success, Mrs. Hudson. Thank you, sir. Uh, are you sure you don't want me to stay, now that you have a visitor, I mean? Oh, no, no, no. Indeed, no, Mrs. Hudson. I can show the gentleman out myself. Off you go and have a good time. Thank you, sir. I wonder what Lord Whittacombe wants. Perhaps I should stay and give no, you- No, 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 please, my dear fellow, certainly not. Eh? You far more important work to do. Uh, Whittacombe probably just wants his revenge at chess or something equally innocuous. Off with you, my dear fellow, and enjoy yourself. Oh, very good. Just the same. I wish you were coming with me. I'll see you later. I shall be there. Uh, come on up, Whittacombe. Hello, home. Oh, evening, Watson. You make a very convincing Santa Claus. Are you leaving? I'm afraid so, Lord Whittacombe. Well, good night, then. Oh, good night. Good night, sir. How are you, Holmes? All alone on Christmas Eve, eh? <laughs> yes, Whittacombe. I'm glad you came over to see me. Mm -hmm. What's it to be? Uh, an evening of chess? Uh... Uh, perhaps you've unearthed some recent treasure of medieval pottery that we can discuss. Neither, Holmes. I've come to you in your professional capacity. I, I need help. Oh, calm down, Whittaker. Don't tell me after all these years of quiet friendship you're going to become a client. Uh, yes, I'm afraid so, Holmes. 
though I doubt if my problem will interest, interest you very much. It's hardly up to your rather colorful standards. Or care for a cigar? Oh, thanks. Oh. Now, my dear Whittacombe, what's your trouble? Well, I decided this year to have a little Christmas party at my townhouse. I'm quite comfortably off, as you know, and it occurred to me that I have several relatives and friends who are not as well off. I'm having a party for them tonight, Holmes, and I hoped you would attend it, disguised as Santa Claus. <laughs> my dear fellow, I've adopted many disguises in my time, but Father Christmas has never been one of them. Why do you want me to attend your party in disguise in any case? Are you ashamed of your friendship with a private detective? Or do you consider my features more acceptable when buried beneath the depths of a snowy beard? Now, my dear Holmes, do take me seriously. I'm not joking, I assure you. Oh, well, no, of course you're not, of course you're not. You, uh, you want me to attend your party in disguise, why? I'm giving some very valuable presents. Uh, Diamond and onyx cufflings, platinum and ruby earrings, and such like. And I've wrapped each of the presents in banknotes. Oh, dear me. Where are these presents now? In a sack, in charge of my butler. I was going to dress up as Santa Claus and give them out myself until I got the warning letter. That's why I've come to you. Warning letter, eh? Yes, I received it this evening post. Listen to this. My dear Lord Whittacombe, your generosity with Christmas presents borders on ostentation. We do not approve. Either we receive 5,000 pounds in sovereigns at Post Restaurant the Fox 379 by six o'clock on Christmas Eve, or I'm afraid your Christmas party will be conspicuous by its absence of presents. Hmm. Let me see that note, Whittacombe, will you? Uh, yes, here you are. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Plain paper, torn from a penny notebook. The writing is obviously disguised. It's by George, yes. Whittacombe, I accept the case. I'll come with you to your party at once. And furthermore, I shall follow your suggestion regarding a disguise. <clears throat> Dressed as Santa Claus, I should be less likely to attract suspicion. I'm delighted, Holmes. But what made you decide so quickly? This writing, my dear fellow, this writing. Though it's in a false hand, I know that characteristic in, in my dear Whittacombe. I've seen it too many times at the beginning of a signature. Moriarty. Moriarty? Who's he? Oh, one of the cleverest and most unscrupulous criminals in England. Whittacombe, there's no time to be lost. It's, let me see now, of 6.30, half an hour past the deadline given to you in this letter. We must go to your house at once. Ah, Dr. Watson, you said you wanted to get into the house through the back way so that you could surprise the children. Yes, I thought I'd pretend to come down the ch kitchen chimney. Oh, you can get to the back of the house by going up that alley here. I'll go in the front door. Splendid, splendid, Mrs. Hudson. Which is the house? Number 28. It's the third one down the alley, Doctor. I'll have the back window open in no time, and you can slip in without any of the children seeing you. Very well. Gloomy little street, I must say. Hmm. Hello. Where's that music coming from? Oh, it's from that temple across the street, Doctor. The Disciples of the Octagonal Square. They call themselves. What on earth do you suppose that means? Uh, some newfangled cult. Heathens, most likely. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I'm not the only Santa Claus abroad tonight. Look at that fellow across the street over there. Oh, just, just like yourself, Doctor. And carrying a sack, too. Oh, he's running up the steps to the temple. Ooh, great Scott, he, he slipped on the ice. Here, here, my man. Let me help you up, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. It's really me, wasn't it? Oh, we Santa Clauses have to help each other, you know. 
Uh, up you come. That's it. Whoa. Oh, gracious me. Oh, doctor. I told you to be careful. Now you've fallen too. Oh, it's this confounded red coat of mine. It tripped me up. Oh, did you hurt yourself, sir? No, 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 no. I'm all right, I think. Oh, uh, how about you, sir? Oh, I'm all right, thanks. A Philly, Philly me to run, wasn't it? Ah, uh, here's your sack, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, goodbye and Merry Christmas. Oh, good night, sir. Same to you. Oh, he went into the temple. Must be a disciple of the octagonal square. <laughs> you're sure you're not hurt, Doctor? No, no, of course not, Mrs. Hudson. Give me my sack, please. Oh, thank you. Your sister's house is the third one down the alleyway, you say? I'll hurry and open the back window. Yes, I'll be waiting for you, Mrs. Hudson. <laughs> this is going to be rather fun. What a shame Holmes isn't with us. Oh, well, he's probably happier having a good game of chess with Lord Whittacombe. This is my house, Holmes, number 39. 39 Bronson Square, eh? And dear old Watson is just around the corner in Lexington Gardens and hasn't any idea I've left Baker Street. <laughs> Listen to that. Carol singers. Yes, we'll probably have our fill of them before this evening's over. Good evening, my lord. Have the guests arrived, Hargrave? Most of them, sir. They're in the library. You brought another Santa Claus with you, I see, my An lord. Another Santa Claus? What do you mean? <laughs> the gentleman arrived three quarters of an hour ago, sir, dressed as Santa Claus. I took him to your study, my lord, and showed him the sack of presents. Confound it! He got here before us. Where's the study? This way. I hope I didn't do wrong, my lord. You told me the gentleman dressed as Santa Claus would be coming here. Oh, dear me, the gentleman appears to have gone. Yes, and the sack containing the presents with him. But he can't have left the house, my lord. I've been watching the front door. Yes, and while you were doing that, he slipped out the window here. The catch is undone. Hargrave, describe this man. I can't tell you much about his appearance, I'm afraid, sir. He was dressed as Santa Claus, just like yourself. <laughs> but I did notice one thing about him, sir. Oh, what was that? He lisped, sir. It was quite pronounced. Of course! Lou the Lisper! <laughs> Who on earth is Lou the Lisper? One of Moriarty's most trusted accomplices. Fortunately, though, I've had news of him lately through my underworld grapevine. You know where he lives? He's reputed to have some connections with a new cult that calls themselves the Disciples of the Octagonal Square. <laughs> Their headquarters just around the corner from here. Then let's go there at once. Of course. And Hargrave? Yes, sir. Get a message to Scotland Yard as fast as you can. <laughs> Ask for Inspector Lestrade and tell them to join me at the Temple of the Octagonal Square in Lexington Gardens as soon as possible. Had the have a danger to the to the newborn king. Oh, the children are awful excited, Doctor. I've told them you just came down the chimney. I'll slip the beard on and then I'll be ready. There we are. Quiet now, children, quiet. Santa Claus has come to see ye, and he's brought you all presents. Hello, hello, children. Hello, Santa Claus. My name is Elsie. Did you bring me a present? I did, Elsie. I'll look in my sack in a minute, and uh, what's your name, young man? Herbert. They call me Bertie. Did you come down the chimney? Yes, Bertie. I bet you had a time doing it. You're, you're pretty round. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't be rude, Bertie, or Santa Claus won't give you any presents. And what's your name, little man? Louder. I have a cold. Oh. 
Yes, I see you have. Well, children, gather round me and I'll see what presents I've got for you. Er, the first present is for... Oh, that can't be right. It, it, it says for Her Grace the Dowager Duchess of Dooley? Oh, do you suppose Mr. Holmes has been playing a practical joke on you, Doctor? Well, I suppose so, but I can't see the point myself. But he did say that he added a few trinkets of his own. I want my present. Then, supposing you take this, Elsie. Oh, thank you. And this one is marked for... The Reverend Arthur Carter? Wonder what Holmes is up to. Ah, uh, here you are, Bertie. Cool. Thank you. And this is for you, Lionel, because you've been a good little boy. I wanted a dog, goodness gracious. Well, I'll bring you a dog next year, Lionel. <laughs> Dr. Watson? Yes, Mrs. Hudson? Look at the wrapping on these presents, Doctor. Why, they're 20 pound notes. Great Scott, look what I've got. Now, let me see why cufflinks and diamond and onyx ones unless i'm very much mistaken i got some pretty earrings look how they sparkle let me see those Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> goodness gracious i swear that these are platinum and rubies what in thunder is going on i want my earrings back give me back mine too oh well here you are here you are <laughs> dr watson what do you suppose has happened I don't know, Mrs. Hudson. Perhaps my toys are still at the bottom of the sack? I can't understand it. I wish Holmes were here and instead of dozing in front of our fire at Baker Street. Where are you, Holmes? Here by the bed. This is the only room in the temple that gives any signs of having been lived in. I think our bird has been here, but I'm afraid he's flown. Wish Inspector Lestrade would get here. Strike a match, would you, Whittacombe? Right. Uh, here's a candle on the table. Just as I feared. Look, on the bed. A red coat and beard. Yes. Lou the Lisper has discarded his disguise and gone. With him, I'm afraid, your valuable presence. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a sack lying on the floor. Oh, no, this isn't mine. Look what's in it. A tiny dog, large box of chocolates, a little girl's doll. What in thunder? Well, this is Watson's sack. But how on earth could Lou the Lisper have gotten hold of it? Somewhere, somehow, he and Watson must have made an accidental exchange, and Lou the Lisper is no doubt trying to track Watson down at this very moment. We must work fast, Whittacom, or my friend's life and those of Mrs. Hudson and her relatives won't be worth a tinker's damn. Winter is coming, and you know what that means. It's time for cabin fever here at Northland. <laughs> Starting January 2nd, join us upstairs to get your bingo card and to start reading and adding your books to our new software we're using, Read Squared. So every book you read will get you an entrance in for a grand prize drawing at the end of our program, as well as a couple of gift cards throughout. So make sure to stop by the desk upstairs on January 2nd for your bingo card. And we look forward to seeing all of the books you read this winter. And, and that's the case in a nutshell, Lestrade. Yes. Seems to me, Lord Whittacombe, you'd have been wiser to get in touch with Scotland Yard when you first got the warning note. We could have nabbed him when he came to your house and pinched the snack, the snack, the sack of buttons. The straw, this is no time for postmortems. We've got to reach Lou the Lisper before he finds Dr. Watson. Do you suppose he can do that, Holmes? It won't be difficult. Lou the Lisper is nearly as clever as his master, Professor Moriarty. 
The chances are that you were followed when you came to Baker Street tonight, Whittacombe, and it's equally likely that Watson and Mrs. Hudson were followed as they left it. Moriarty seldom leaves anything to chance. Well, where did Dr. Watson go tonight? 28 Lexington Gardens. It's just around the corner from here. Then let's go there at once. And find our quarry away. No, 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 Lestrade. We must use a little subtlety. Now, Lou the Lisper wishes to recover that sack of presents from Watson. How would he invade the party with the least possible trouble? By, uh, by dressing up as a Santa Claus again. No, no, I think he's overplayed that role for one evening. Well, then how would he try to get in, Mr. Holmes? Oh, come now, Lestrade. What group of people can enter any house on Christmas Eve without invitation and without creating suspicion? The carol singer. Exactly, my dear fellow. I shouldn't be surprised at all if at this very moment, Lou the Lisper and some of his gang are singing carols outside of 28 Lexington Gardens. Well, then what are we going to do? Form a rival choral society. How many of your men did you bring with you? Three. A sergeant and two constables. Wearing greatcoats? Well, yes, Mr. Holmes, but why? Good. They can hide their helmets and pretend to be singers. Come on, let's get over there and while we're walking, we'll rehearse our carols. Uh, we must appear reasonably convincing. <clears throat> Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Steve. <laughs> no, no, you mustn't make Santa Claus too tired, Lionel. No, that's all right, Mrs. Hudson. Hop on, Lionel, hop on. Ooh, they're singing carols outside the door. Oh, isn't that nice? Can't they come inside and sing for us, Santa Claus? Yes, of course they can. Ask them to come in, Mrs. Hudson, will you? All right, sir. Ooh, come on. Let me get on your back, too. Oh, now, now. Take it easy. Oh, there we go. I want to see a reindeer, Santa. See my reindeer? Well, they're up on the roof. I'll climb up and see them. No, no, no. You mustn't do that. They're... Asleep! Oh, here are the carol singers. Off you get, children. There you go. That's it now. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, and Merry Christmas. Would you like to sing some carols to the children? After all, I'm... After that, I'm sure you'd like a drop of... <laughs> something to warm you up. Well, thank you, sir. We sure like that. Haven't... I, uh, met you somewhere before, my man? Sure, no, 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 sir, I'm sure you haven't. Er, come on, men, let's sing, uh, Good King Wenceslas. Good King Wenceslas, on the best of Well, here we are, outside the house, Mr. Holmes. Now what? Listen. Lou the Lisper and his men are already there. Are we going in now? In a moment. Now, men, you have your truncheons ready? Yes, Mr. Holmes. We're ready. Splendid. Now, remember, when we're inside and I yell Merry Christmas at the top of my voice, you bring out your truncheons and get Lou the Lisper and his gang out of there as quickly as possible. Do not arrest them until you get them outside again, Lestrade. I don't want to frighten the children. All right you are, Mr. Holmes. We're ready. Just give us the word and we'll go in and get them. Ah, oh, that was very nice singing. And now how about something to warm you up? Well, that won't be necessary, Dr. Watson. Seated at the door, Sammy. Now, all of you stay right where you are. Who are you? What do you think you're up to? Please don't be difficult, Doctor. All I want is the jewel, and I'll um, out of that sack that you stole from me tonight. You try and stop me, I shall have to hurt you. Why, why do you talk so funny? Do you <laughs> have a cold like me? Shut up! <laughs> now, Doctor. Where are the jewels? 
More carolers. Shall I tell them to go away, Lou? No, better let them come in. If we don't, they might get suspicious. All right, Lou. I suppose you know what you're up to. Now, no tricks, sucker. If you try and give an alarm, I shall have to get rough with you. Well, I don't mind about that, but just remember, there are children present. Well, how are ye, matey? You were here before us, eh? Well, what do you say we all join in a little carol for the nippers, eh? Well, uh, all right, but do you want to sing? How about, uh, hark to herald angels sing? All right, all right. Er, come on, men, let's sing. Hark to herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Merry Christmas! I don't know if I should get that way. Watson, they're all hitting oh, each other with truncheons. Here, oh. you can't do that. No, no, they're no, all no. going away. They're dragging each other out. Hey, hey, come back here. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> oh, Holmes, Holmes, what in thunder is going on? I'll explain it to you later, old chap. The stud. Yes, Mr. Holmes. Take them to Scotland Yard and press charges. Uh, I will be over in a little while to give evidence. Right you are, sir. <laughs> too bad we didn't catch Professor Moriarty, too. <laughs> well, at least we have some of his cohorts. I'll see you later, Lestrade. I wish I knew what was going on here. Is Moriarty mixed up in this business? And yes, Watson, and I'll tell you all about it as soon as I've straightened this thing out. Oh, uh, Whittacombe? Yes, Holmes? The 20 pound notes that you used as wrapping for your gifts seem to have been left scattered all over the house. Do you want me to recover them too? No, from what you've told me of the children, I think their parents could use the money much more profitably than my relatives. In any case, I can replace it. A very generous Christmas gift. Well, children, did you enjoy the little game we staged for you? It was a lot of fun, yes. I nearly died laughing when they started hitting each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, children. And now I, uh, I want you to show me the presents you received. I got these pretty earrings. Oh, they were a part of the game, too. A nice little girl like you doesn't want silly earrings, Elsie. Here's a beautiful doll for you. <gasps> Ooh, her eyes open and shut and everything. <laughs> And what did you get, my little man? These. Oh, cufflinks. Good gracious, who wants cufflinks when he could have a, a clockwork train? You want to exchange? Train? Oh, Lord, love a duck, yes. I want a duck. Oh. There's one for you, Lytle. A nice woolly dog. <laughs> and here you are, children. Here's a nice big box of chocolates, too. You can all share them. Oh, what a night! I ain't had as much fun since Granny got her finger stuck in the plug hole! <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I still don't understand what's going on, Holmes. But I must say, this has been all the earmarks of being a happy Christmas. <laughs> yes, old fellow. Mrs. Hudson? Uh, I, Mr. Holmes? How's the turkey coming along? Oh, it'll be ready in a few minutes, Mr. Holmes. Splendid. And while we're waiting, perhaps the children would oblige us with something we haven't heard so far this evening. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. A Christmas carol, that really sounds convincing. <laughs> How about it, children? All right, sir. Come on, Elsie. Come on, Lionel. Silent night. Holy night, all is calm, all is bright, found young virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in Hey.
thank you all for joining us tonight. We have Kim on the end playing Bertie and Lestrade. <laughs> Our Mrs. Hudson is Madonna. Ellen is the wonderful Dr. Watson. Our other Kim, Kim number one, <laughs> as Lord Whitaker. And Nick as Sherlock. I was here too. <laughs> I was Katie playing Lou the Lifter. And our lovely Miss Klaus over here on our sound and culture and noise. <laughs> Thank you all again for joining us. Merry Christmas. Compliments to the uh, great show. Yeah.